Oh, hello everyone. I hope you're all well. I hope you're living your life according to the way you want to live it. You're being kind to yourself. You're being kind to your family and friends. You're being kind to your beautiful animals, your beautiful pussy cats, your beautiful dogs, whatever animal you have. And you're generally just being kind to people in the world just to make this uh, a better place. Uh, someone um, today or yesterday called me a grandmother. And I take that as a, a real compliment because actually I'm nearly uh, 58 by the end of the year. And um, I, I love the fact that I, I'm getting older just simply because you really, really learn who you are. Uh, you're at peace with yourself. You have a lot of friends. Life gets better and better. And, um, you know, thank you very much for calling me a grandmother because you are right. I am a grandmother. And um, as I said, uh, that is a compliment because I've got over 40 years experience in financial markets, IT systems, settlement systems, trading cross-currency systems, cross-payment systems, uh, making settlement payments in terms of foreign currency and everything. So if you can top 40 years of experience, uh, good for you, then I'll listen to you. But um, but anyway, look, I do appreciate that because I am, a I am a grandmother and I'm certainly not ageist. And I think most people at this age, like um, David Schwartz, have a lot of experience. And, uh, you know, your life, honestly, begins at 50. So thank you very much for that, those kind com compliments. So today what we're going to do is we're going to talk about um, all things Ripple again, because I'm really on this thing about Ripple at the moment. And um, basically, uh, just looking at the, the market at the moment, Bitcoin looks very good to me. It's going higher and higher. I think it could this year easily take out 20,000. Ethereum's doing well because we know that they're looking at proof of stake and they're going on to their new system very soon. Now, Tether, I've always said, this thing should be lower. This should be at 70 cents, not 99 cents, okay? Because Tether Inc. only buy about 70 cents in the dollar US against a so-called stable coin. And a stable coin is only stable against the US dollar. So if the US dollar is going down, this thing's going to go down as well. XRP is still hovering around 20 cents, but I do believe... Um, whether it's being kept down or not, this thing will uh, change over time. When it changes, it's going to change very quick. Uh, as I said before, I'm in it for the long game, not the short game. Most people are looking at the short game. This is a long game thing, right? Uh, if you look at anything, and I'll say this again, if you look at anything that was new technology over the years, and I've done many YouTubes on this, and check them out on my YouTube, uh, Apple took a long time to, to go up. So did uh, Facebook, so did, um, you know, what else, Microsoft, so did Bitcoin. So you got to be in this stuff for the long game, not the short game, okay? And that's the, that's the deal, right? That's as simple as, as, as it is, right? Now, even ADA's going up and because, you know, Shelley's coming out apparently in July, it doesn't surprise me that ADA's going up. But the thing is, they don't have any clients, right? They don't have any clients. They don't, how are they, how are they going to make revenue? You know, all these projects have to make revenue. Otherwise, they're... They're done in the dust, right? They're done in the dust. They're not going to survive, right? Now, Ripple and XRP make revenue and a lot of other projects don't. That's the story. And these projects, whether they're IT or whether they're technology or whether they're cryptocurrency, will have to make revenue. You can't stand alone and not make revenue. It's just, you know, it's insanity to think that something's going to survive if it doesn't make revenue, right? The tech, the development guys, the tech guys are not going to work for nothing, okay? That's a fact. And uh, the thing is, if the technology doesn't work, uh, any of these projects could be sued by high business, okay? And that's a fact as well. So people that turn around and say Ripple and XRP are scams really are on very soft ground, have no ground at all. Because the thing is, you know, Ripple worked for a lot of different businesses, a lot of different companies. And if they were scams, again, I'll say it again, they would be sued out of, out of the water, particularly in, in legit litigious societies where you know uh, going to a lawyer and suing someone it's just it's just you know it goes with the cause right if you're in business that's exactly what happens you know and if you're on youtube you know you get hit you know you get people that have a go at you and all these sort of things which i'm starting to get used to now i get myself in trouble just without even trying it's a little bit laughable actually um so i'm just the aussie that uh, you know sees things how i see it and, and sometimes people don't understand, you know, what we're talking about. Maybe there is a cultural difference between Aussies and, um, and, and, and other cultures because I have nothing against people that work in fish and chip shops. I mean, I used to work in a fish and chip shop, you know. I've been in poverty. I'm certainly not an elitist, that's for sure. Um, you know, so uh, not at all. I worked in fish and chip shops up until I was about 25 and I've got a lot of respect for fish and chip shops, believe me. So, um you know, going through this, uh, you know, look, I think the bull market is here. 
uh, Tron, nice to see Tron's doing well. I, I, I do like Tron. I think Tron's going to go higher and higher. And I think it's going to be one that will surprise as well, just like XRP, okay? But I know people are getting tired of XRP. But again, this is the long game. And I'll say it again. This is the long game. And someone, uh, people have come out and say that it's being manipulated and it's a scam or just being really, really stupid. I'm not even going to mention this guy's name because, you know, again, Ripple has... 300 clients we know about and those 300 clients have millions and millions of clients right so again ripple could be sued to smithereens if the technology was not working properly okay if the technology didn't work properly and it didn't do what it said these guys like any other corporate could be sued to smithereens and their own personal assets could be sued so people are pretty silly what they say i have to say because they really don't know uh, what they're talking about. Now, if I don't mention names, I can't get myself in trouble, okay? Even though I'm the crypto grandma. And I love it, man. I'm the crypto grandma. It's super. I love, as I said, I love being older because you you learn so much over life and you have a lot of life experience. And I wouldn't want to be, seriously, I wouldn't want to be 25 again. It was way too volatile. All those, you know, love affairs and all those horrible <laughs> breaking up of relationships it was absolutely heartbreaking. As you get older, it doesn't hurt as much, believe me. So anyway, um, Western Union, we do know that Western Union want to snap up MoneyGram. And the thing is, we don't know how much for. Uh, we're being told that MoneyGram has $878 million worth of debt, if this is correct. This was two hours ago by Patrick Thompson. And um, it's going to be interesting to see if it actually happens. Uh, because if Western Union get MoneyGram, it's going to make Western Union very, very big indeed. Now, according to this... Uh, Ripple has 9.95% of MoneyGram. We saw yesterday that um, there were some very large, ho large holders of MoneyGram, Vanguard and Morgan Stanley, okay? And those two are going to have to decide whether they want to sell uh, their equity within MoneyGram to Western Union if a, if a takeover is on the table, okay? Now, of course, it depends on where the, where the price is for MoneyGram. And Morgan Stanley probably got wealth managers that own a lot of those uh, shares, and behind the wealth managers are clients, all right? Uh, high net worth clients or retail clients. So maybe depending on where the price is, they will sell out for sure. Uh, and if we have a look at MoneyGram, uh, their price, and if we look at Western, uh, Western Union's price, they both have gone up. So it's gonna be interesting to see what, what happens there. So let's pull that up and have a squiz here. Uh, there's MoneyGram. This is just on uh, equity trading. And you know, you know, guys, I do equity trading as well. So let's just grab those. What's this? Please move this window from shared. I don't know what I've done there. But let's have a look at MoneyGram, right? MoneyGram at the moment is uh, around 347. This thing could easily get up to 669. Seriously, not that I'm saying that people buy it or anything else, but if there's a takeover in the off and we don't know where that level is, and we know that other takeovers were much higher, like $13, the high on this thing looks like it was 1669, which is a daily. Let's just pull that up again up here somewhere. So this thing could easily trade to 16.69. There's no doubt about it. So look, do your own due diligence and have a look. But I think it could easily get up to 6.69. We go to Western uh, Western Union. I keep saying Western Mining because in Australia there's a company called Western. There used to be a company called Western Mining Corporation. I'm showing now. I am showing you how old I am. And also, I grew up in the 80s. And and honestly, the live bands in the 80s were fantastic. We were spoiled for choice, guys. We had all the bands that you know about today. They still play. You know, we had Abra in the 77. I was like 15 or 14. We had all the live bands. You know, oh, man, we had some fantastic live bands. Seriously. Um, ACDC, uh, Gun N' Roses in the 90s. We had um, In Excess. We had, um, oh golly, we had so many good bands, man. I can't, I can't even tell you. You know, we had David Bowie, you know, Queen earlier. We had the best. And you know what? They could all sing on at live on stage, seriously. You know, Pat Benatar, Meatloaf, you name it. I could go on and go on, go on forever. So, you know, I love, I love my age group. And um, we had a fan, you know, it was like, um, you know, puberty blues, you know, 15, living on the beach and everyone had boyfriends and we're all 15, you know. We had, we had great time. If anything, they're more conservative now than they were when we were growing up. You could drink alcohol, you'd go to parties and the police would be, you know, you'd be in the car and you'd be drinking alcohol. It was wild. Um, and it was the time where parents didn't have mobile phones. So if you said that you were away sleeping at your girlfriend's place, you might have been somewhere else and they'd never check up. It was a great time, honestly. So I love my age group. Um Anyway, so let's, enough of that. Gosh, I was reminiscing for a minute there. 
let's get a Western Union, right? Now they go, these guys are at $28, right? And they had, they have, uh, they're starting to move higher. Now they could easily do a share swap, right? So in other words, uh, for every, every three of, you know, every three of MGI, uh, you buy one of Western Union, for example, right? So therefore, you know, divide 22 by three, then you know where MGI is, okay? So, you know, again, I, I think uh, just looking at this, not that I'm giving you financial advice, but MGI looks like it can go higher. And, and so does w, uh, WU. And the thing is the stock market is, you know, going higher and higher to 26,400 the down. I do think it can go higher. So this is gonna be very interesting to see where this thing goes, okay? Very, very interesting indeed. So let's go back. Let's go back to what else we're looking at here and see what the story is. So I think that could go uh, a bit higher for sure. Uh, so let's go to the next one. What else we got here? Uh, XRP check introduces needs just one more voice to pass. And, and this was just out uh, at 10.30 American time. Uh, a validator moves veto, a revolutionary amendment. So XRP checks amendment gain 28 yays of 36, and therefore it's one hit away from implementation. But the one circumstance, circumstances makes things spicy with novelty, okay? Uh, Ballada moves veto. It was announced the third that the Alloy Network, one of XRP validators, will lift its veto on implementation of check, checks in XRP payment mechanisms. So they need all the uh, validators uh, to, you know, a certain percentage of them to say yes, and if they get them all saying yes, they'll actually put the implementation in, okay? The LA Network leader mean, managed to keep their word and move their voice to yes section. So approve 77% of the validators. So, okay, so uh, with with all them saying yes, they're going to put in this, uh, this check, which again is more, you know, uh, bells and whistles on the technology of XRP's ledger, okay? And, uh, you know, this thing, XRP's ledger uh, is running compared to everyone else. And they just keep putting more and more uh, checks and balances within their ledger, okay? Uh, so this is a very, very good story, okay? A very good story. It just means there's more security in terms of the ledger, okay? And that is a good story in itself. Now, Dr, um, sorry, uh, the CEO, uh, David Schwartz, who, who again is my generation, and he, he must be a grandpa by now, and I'm sure, he loves his grand grand uh, kids. I apologise, uh, Mr. David Shorts, Shorts, if you're not. Uh, but we sure as hell had a great time in, when we were growing up. Honestly, and we still laugh about it now. Um, you know, also there were some other great bands like White Snake. Man, they were fantastic. White Snake, uh, Europe. Golly, there were so many good bands. Uh, Steve Perry. Oh my God, I could go on and on. Steve Perry was fantastic. So David Schwartz, uh, and I mentioned this yesterday, quell speculation of a uh, potential Ripple stable coin. As I said, they don't need a stable coin, right? They don't need a stable coin. Stable coins can go on Ripple's platform because they've got a fantastic platform and they don't need stable coins, right? Um, and that's the thing, right? Uh, Ripple can be collateralized, it can collateralize, it can, it can do anything, right? So Ripple itself is almost stable, right? It doesn't need to be, you know, they don't need to introduce another stable coin. It has more liquidity than any other coin out there. And seriously, Tether should not be above uh, XRP. Now, that's a fact, okay? The fact that Tether's there, it just shows you how stupid and how silly this market is. Because Tether, US Tether, uh, says it's supposed to be stable against US dollars. And therefore, it should have 100% US dollars behind it. Now, I've said this before, but Tether does not have 100% of US behind it, okay? So it's like saying, right, we've got a, we've got a stable coin in donuts, right? So one for one, every time the price of donuts goes up, the stable coin goes up, right? But you need 100% of donuts, right? To have 100% of stable coin donuts. Tether doesn't have 100%. Right, it's only got seven out of ten donuts compared to the stable coin of donuts, right? So, therefore, if tether goes up or down, it's not going to mimic exactly the US dollar if the US dollar goes up and down, right? So, it's not real, it's not actually real, it's only supposedly 70% real to the US dollar, okay? So, another thing Ripple has global reach, it's everywhere, everywhere, right? It's in Brazil, it's in the Middle East, it's in Europe, it's in America, it's going everywhere, Mexico, everywhere. 
And, you know, they're even talking about working capital loans and collateralization and lending money out to people, just like Nexo do, just like Celsius do. Ripple are honestly way ahead of any other competitor out there. You know, so they're going to do cryptocurrency loans and other types of loans, right? Like banks do. Loans probably even for houses and mortgages, right? These guys are running, right? They could lend money out to every retail client to purchase a house, right? They can lend money out for businesses. They can lend money out for anything. They also invest in businesses, right? These guys are running, running. Think about the long game, people, the long game. I know it's frustrating. This coin is not going up, but it will. The long game, okay? Because they're putting all the right things in place. These guys are running, right? Just because Shelly comes out, you know, uh, Ada comes out, oh, we're going to do Shelly, you know, Shelly, right? Yes, the coin will go up because people are trading at Ada, right? But the fundamentals, big deal. They've been talking about putting out Shelly for years, right? Mm -hmm. Ada, they've been talking about it for years and the coin goes up two cents, right? Work that out, okay? People just get behind these things for the short game. But the long game is this is where Ripple is going. And anyone that puts Ripple down or XRP, it's going to end up with egg on their face, seriously, and a lot more because they just look silly because they seriously don't know what they're talking about, okay? These guys are talking about working capital loans, which means they can give loans to business. They can give loans to you and me as a personal loan. They can give loans to anyone, right? A personal loan in Australia, just to put it in perspective, if I take it a personal loan, it's going to cost me 16 17%. Okay, when the 10 year bond rate in America is 0.67, something somewhere around there, and the 10 year bond rate in Australia, in Australia is about 1%, and the, and, and the banks are going to charge me 16%. Not only that, they're going to charge me an application fee for a loan of $600, plus they're going to charge me all other costs. So by the time you add up all those costs, a personal loan from the bank is going to cost me 17 to 18%, right? Ripple could actually go out there and lend money to people probably at 2 or 3% right? And put all the banks out of, out of, out of position, out of, out of competition, right? Ripple could become a bank. They could become an exchange. They could do anything because they're so clever and so smart. Tell me any other cryptocurrency that could do that. I tell you, you out of all the 3,000, I've probably done reviews on my, on about 600 or 700. And I can tell you right now, no one is as smart as these guys. Absolutely. And I, as I said, I'm an old bag. I'm a grandma, 40 years in markets. And I know what I'm talking about. You know, I could, you know, any young buck or anything like that, you know, doesn't have the experience. It's just that simple. And if you think I'm arrogant, well, that's fine. I mean, you know, maybe us Aussies can be a bit like that sometimes. And I apologize for that. But, you know, we know our stuff and you can't deny that. You can't deny it. You cannot deny that we, we have the experience. You know, I've got three degrees. I started a PhD as well. So I really know what I'm talking about. Anyway, that's just the way it is. So, um, <laughs> Let's get this other thing here that I saw today. Voyager publishes June interest rates, Bitcoin is... Okay, so Voyager is doing interest rates too. And there's XRP there if you want to deposit with them. But what, there's nothing to stop XRP and Ripple doing this. You know, you could deposit with them. You know, you could... You, Ripple, you know, they could, they could ask any other cryptocurrency to come on their platform and start depositing rates. You know, I'll give you rates, you know, working rates, borrowing or lending, Okay repo rates or lending rates whatever ripple can do anything right that's a fact and they could do something like this this crowd just like celsius do just like nexo voyager is in competition with nexo and celsius right and celsius coin and nexo's coins done quite well okay right so and yes we know about ripple and the ceo uh, with the central bank we know all about that and what do they say right and this just came out at 346 my time today According to the head of the company in Brazil, the focus at the moment is to discuss the bank and regulate the possibility of coexistence of cryptocurrency with traditional operations to make transactions in the global financial system more efficient. And you know what? Ripple and their technology is the only one to do that. No one else, no one else can do that, okay? No one else can do that. They need Ripple. No wonder they're talking to Ripple, okay? They need Ripple. Ripple partnered with big banks in Brazil, such as Santana, Brazil, Bresco, and Redemento. So don't you think these regulators know all about this? You know, the thing is, right, if Ripple was a scam, why would the Brazilian Central Bank be talking to them? How can they get all these partnerships if they don't work? The technology wouldn't work. Transfer XRP to any exchange or to anyone and look how quick it goes. Do it to <clears throat> another cryptocurrency and just see how slow it is. 
you know, people saying uh, it's a scam and white sort of business are just stupid. Uh, they've got evil on their face. They're really silly because obviously they don't check anything or test anything. Okay, and that's all there is to it. Right, now XRP is on uh, Bitstamp Exchange. Now Bitstamp, for people that don't know, is one of the oldest exchanges in the world. Very, very old exchange, been around for a long time. Okay, operates out of Europe. And if you operate out of Europe, it settles pretty much very quickly within a day or so if you send money out from Bitstamp, okay, in Euro. So the fact they're going to pounds is a good story with XRP, very good story. Uh, they have a lot of clients, Bitstamp, okay, and uh, they're a very, very old, old exchange, not to be confused with BitMEX, okay? So, and they're, uh, you know, their security is very good. And to my knowledge, I don't think they've ever had a, I don't think they've had a hack, but don't, don't, uh, you know, hold me to that, but I don't think they have, okay? So what else we got here? That's of interest. Now, oh, Binance also has XRP option, uh, option contracts, okay? Now that's very interesting, options, right? You can basically buy or sell an option at a strike price, over a particular maturity date uh, uh, in the future. Now, with options, a call option, to give you an idea, if you buy a call option, you pay a premium, and say if you bought a call option uh, at the money, Ripple at 20 cents, uh, sorry, XRP at 20 cents, and had a maturity of three, day, uh, three months, you pay a premium for the call option. So say if you pay a premium of two cents for three months of this option, so your break even is 22 cents, because your strike is 20 and you're paying a premium two cents. And then if Ripple goes to 30 cents uh, in between the expire of the option, it means that you're going to be in the money with the option. Now, the beauty of options is you get more leverage on, on XRP. You don't have to use cash. So you could have a contract to buy 5,000 XRPs with a little bit of premium rather than having to pay XRP, okay? Now, this is a great story. And this is going to increase more liquidity in XRP. A matter of fact, I wouldn't even mind buying some options on XRP. Uh, it is dangerous to sell options. If you know what you're doing, do it. But if you don't know what you're doing, don't sell options on anything, okay? Because you've got a live open position with no hedging, and that is quite dangerous. If you believe that XRP is going to do, go down, you buy a put. But if you believe she's going to go up, which I do, you'd be buying calls on this, okay? For longer dated options. And it just depends how much... Uh, what Binance, how they're going to price these options, okay? I assume because they're retail, they're probably going to take a little bit out of you, but I'd have to look at the pricing. But that's a great story that they've actually, they're creating uh, options, XRP options. Okay, so they're calling them, and their future options warns trade for XRP and Ethereum. And uh, that is a good story in itself, okay? And I'll be monitoring that just to see uh, what's happening with those options and to see, you know, how many options are being done because that will affect the price of XRP if there are a lot of put options on XRP, okay? So what else we got here? Just looking very quickly, you've got that. Uh, anything else I want to say? Let's have a look at the most read news, most read news for XRP. I'm just focusing on that today. Uh, we covered all that, nothing more really. Just uh, it's still at 20. Looks like you can get through 20. We covered all that stuff the other day. And uh, let's just keep an eye on things. Let's hope that uh, some news comes out about um, Western Union and XRP. And, uh, you know, if I have anything, I'll come back to you pronto, guys. Anyway, that's enough of me. Look after yourself, people. From the grandmother, I should call myself Grandmother Esoteric Trading Solutions. Uh, I quite like that. And uh, please look after yourself. I've got the grey hair to prove it. There you go. Grey hair to prove it all there. And I love every bit of my grey hair. So there you go. I don't find it offensive at all. But thank you very much for the nice compliment. Anyway, guys, please look after yourself and I'll talk to you very soon. Thank you very much. Bye for now.